Outside of Japan, the Super Nintendo didn't have very many tactical RPGs, and strategy games primarily fell under Koei's complex and tedious dominion. While Sega gamers were proudly flaunting their war songs and shining forces, Nintendo fanboys were forced to pacify their battle lust by playing and replaying Ogre Battle. But in the land of the rising sun, everything was a lot different. Japan was harboring a surplus of SRPGs, many of which have since been unofficially fan translated into English, among other languages. One such release was Treasure Hunter G. While technically the last Super Famicom title published by Squaresoft, G was actually developed by Sting, a niche developer Americans may recognize for their quirky string of cult favorites such as Riviera the Promised Land, Yggdra Union, and Dokapon Kingdom. Treasure Hunter G tells the story of two brothers who travel across the globe searching for their missing father. They soon uncover a dastardly plot by the really not very nice guy Dark Lord to imprison the world's guardian fairies and reawaken an undead dragon named, descriptively, Bone Dino. And with the help of a mysterious girl and her funky violin playing monkey, our heroes begin gathering ancient relics to, uh, pad the plotline. I guess. Really, the story's not all that important, and only serves as a convenient vehicle to drive the player from dungeon to dungeon. Treasure Hunter G's true charm lies in its completely unique battle system. In fact, Treasure Hunter G is so different from traditional role-playing games in general that players will find themselves having to relearn everything they thought they knew about the genre. Treasure Hunter G combines traditional RPG exploration with small-scale tactical battles. On-screen enemies are very reminiscent of Chrono Trigger. Bad guys patrol dungeon corridors, with most monsters being somewhat avoidable if you're sick of fighting and your reflexes are tight enough to maneuver around them, while others leap out from behind bushes or obstacles and trigger surprise encounters. Once engaged in combat, it's hard not to notice that the ground is shaded different colors around the enemy units. This is referred to as the battle grid, these colors negatively impact player action points, or ACT, when characters move into or perform actions from those squares. With yellow squares costing twice as much ACT as blue squares, and red squares twice as much as yellow squares, with the spectrum ending in a hot magenta color. But because characters gain ACT boosts as they improve their equipment, the increased battle grid is mostly kept in check for the majority of the game. By the time your party reaches the final dungeon, however, the map practically glows magenta, and things start to get a bit tedious. But hey, that's why having the ability to avoid encounters is so important. The trick to successfully kicking monster butt in Treasure Hunter G is learning how to work with the battle grid. Each character has some sort of long-range attack, whether it be ranged offensive magic or just a really long polearm. If you can position your character just outside the enemy's fear of influence, you can attack more often. Characters can also swap equipment mid-battle. One of my favorite strategies was to knock an enemy away from blue, switch weapons, and then start poking them with a spear. Which brings up another interesting point. Each of the four characters has their own personal battle style, with no one party member playing like another. Red is your basic melee fighter. He's got both strong offensive and defensive stats with high act. His drawback is his lack of elemental magic, although he has some melee skills, and can only equip close-range swords. Blue is the second best fighter with an equally high defense, which is kind of hilarious because outside of battle, Blue is a total crybaby. He can equip both close-range axes as well as long-range spears. Or, lay down traps and teleport allies randomly across the screen. It is a bit of a gamble to use effectively, but when his strategies pay off, you can lure enemies into landmines and ambush monsters from behind. Useful because the game uses two separate stats for defense, one for front guard and one for rear guard. Basically, if you can flank an opponent, you will always deal more damage. And as in most video games, dealing damage is a good thing. Rain is your stereotypical white mage. She's best utilized as support. 
She's the weakest in terms of offense, but her healing spells and act stat boost are crucial during boss fights. If need be, she can roast monsters with fire magic or attack from a distance with her chakram. In either case, she's best kept off the front lines, because if she dies, you won't be able to rely on magic to resurrect her. Finally, there's adorable Pongo, the badass black mage of the party. He can cast whichever elemental magic is appropriate for the occasion. Most enemies will be resilient to one type while weaker to another, so figuring out which to use in any given situation is usually a matter of trial and error. Pongo is also surprisingly handy with close range daggers, but if he really has nothing better to do, he can attempt to lull monsters to sleep with his rocking violin skills. His only real weakness is his lower axe stat. Unfortunately, whatever he decides to do during his turn, he won't be doing much of it. And of course, any character can use battle items. Frogs, orbs, and jars are all pretty effective at taking down early game bosses, but you'll find your characters relying on them less and less as they grow more powerful themselves. In its pursuit for distinction, Treasure Hunter G is not without its mystifying design mechanics. Experience points are awarded twice, once to individual characters for hitting an enemy, and again to all surviving characters at the end of battle. But I was most perplexed by the complete lack of monetary reward from fighting. Gold can only be obtained by opening chests, selling items, or searching pots. Because money has become a finite resource, you'll not only spend a significant amount of time searching every town nook and dungeon cranny for treasure, but you're also forced to carefully balance your budget when shopping for items and equipment. Furthermore, you can't simply sell your goods in any old shop. Each town contains a creepy old loiterer who's more than happy to purchase your unwanted junk. Treasure Hunter G unfortunately suffers from a storyline identity crisis. The game wrestles between serious drama and madcap comedy, but succeeds at neither. The enemies are never given more identity beyond being nasty and evil just because, and the more somber scenes are undermined by an otherwise lighthearted tone of the adventure and overall lack of character development. Junkies looking for that next epic Squaresoft fix are going to be sadly let down by this absence of depth. But fans of strategy gaming may find a deep appreciation for this title's quirks and unique combat mechanics. But I don't care who you are. Everybody has got to love that damn monkey.